Hi, my name is Brian English, form name Hyperbytes, and in this module we're going to be dealing with uh, the concept of using a person's role on login to divert them to different areas of your website. And then after that we'll be dealing with the um, process of securing those areas so only authorised people will be able to access them. This is a bit of a spin-off from the um, community portal series that I've done. So the user has actually used a two-table um, login process for um, users and roles. However, in this particular use case, a user will only ever reside in one role. So this really could have been done in a single table, um, but they've used two tables. So I'm going to show you, first of all, I have a simple users table. I haven't even bothered encrypting the passwords here um, because this is not about really about login. It's dealing with logins. We have four users and each user has a, an allocated role. And you know, it's one role only per user. And if we look at what that table actually produces, if we do a join on it, we can see that we have the four people so admin is A, client is C, freelance is F, and location is L. Fairly straightforward. What we want to be able to do is to view what the role is of the person when they're logged in. So at the moment, the login process actually just returns an identity and nothing more. Um, so you get the, the unique, use, unique user ID of the person who's just logged in. But we need to know the role, so we need to extend that login process just a little. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to add a security identify step um, so we can identify who that user is who is just logged in and then using that as a reference point we're going to do a single query, a single database query and what we're going to do is we're going to query that user role join based on user ID, um, which is covered quite well in uh, the series regarding uh, the community portal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to return the role of that particular user. So that's the role of the logged in user that we're going to get, provided we set the condition as a user ID is equal to our security identify stage. So if we log in as user five, it will look up user 5 here it will then link with that role table and it will return the role of user 5. Make sure you want output ticked obviously and now if we go back into our login page what we can do is at the moment I've got a simple success message here um, and what I'm going to do is just extend that to say login looks successful by user of role and then I'm going to add the role that we found in that data query. Now that you'll find that login now returns that query that we've uh, just written and if I click on role there now if we actually do a login you should see that it knows the role of the person who was logged in so we just do admin at my site Dot com. I've actually cheated and hard coded the password in and you see now it says successful by user of role A because we actually now know the role which has been uh, allocated to that particular user. To support this demo I've now I've what I've done is I've created four areas within the um, Websites so four within the page views admin clients freelance and locations Into which files for those four particular management processes can be placed Technically you could put them all in the same folder, but it's going to get really messy. So I would always recommend that um, An individual put creates those four areas there and what I've actually done is created just a home page in each of those um, which is where we're going to log in to. But very important, because we're going to be dealing with uh, four completely different sort of sections of the website, and we're going to have to have security applied to them, each of these pages actually use a different layout as well. 
So what I've done is I've also created layouts called Admin, Clients, Freelance and Locations. And if we go on the routing panel, we can see that our admin page uses the admin layout. Our freelancer page uses the freelance, obviously the clients, the clients layout and the locations, the locations layout. And that's really important because what we're actually going to do is secu enforce security at a layout level so that uh, each layout will be secured by reference to the role that the person has. So if we just run through that again, we've got, first of all, we'll four layouts, one for each of the different areas of the site. And obviously also have a, a standard layout, which is what's attached to this login, because you must have a non-secure area in the uh, website. Otherwise, nobody could actually access a login page. So I've created four separate folders within here for the four different home pages for each of those which are linked to those layout pages and of course we have our four routes as well so how do we now manage with that well now we know that when we log in our server action is returning the role that the, the person has logged in and what i'm going to do is first of all so i'm going to convert that notifies message from being a run action to a flow because this is much easier to do within a flow so now we can see at the moment we've just got this message login successful what we can now do is just add some very simple conditional logic in here add action flow control condition condition would be First of all, data, query, role, operation is equal to A. So we set a condition. And if that condition applies, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to use a, a go to. So we're going to run. We're going to use our browser component go to and we're going to send them via the routing to the admin home page. Very important here, internal, just in case you're not quite clear what internal does. Um, within Node, the, um, the content pages are refreshed with inside the layout page. If you flag internal, then basically the layout sec part of the page changes, sorry, the, the content part of the page changes, but the layout is not refreshed. And that improves the efficiency of the, um, the page and also the look and feel because you don't get that flick as the page refreshes. But in this case, we're actually going to be not only changing the page, but that page will be linked to a different layout. So it's really important that that layout page is refreshed as well. So in this particular section, because we're switching from the uh, main layout, which is the one linked to the login, in this case we're going to the admin with the admin layout, do not check internal because um, that would break everything basically. And we need to do that same process now for condition equals A, run admin. And I'm just going to now pause the video. Uh, and I'm going to do that, all of four of those, just to save you watching and then restart. So if you give me one moment. Okay, so now I've completed those four conditions. We've got our condition is A, we'll go to our admin homepage. If it's L for location, we go to the locations homepage. If it's F for freelancer, we go to the freelancer homepage. And if it is C for clients, you can... Uh, at the client's home that move to the client's home page and in each case obviously we haven't clicked that internal um, tick box because we want those layouts to be refreshed so I'll save that now if we just have a look and see whether what that does what we can do is we'll fire up our browser we'll start with admin Let's log in on that, and there we are. 
because it's detected the role is admin then it has moved you to the admin area and if I change that to locations for example it will take us to the locations area and so we can go through all of that clients area and then lastly freelance can't remember whether that's freelance or freelancer freelancer and there we are got the freelance area so that's how we use the roles of the individual to be able to um, different different uh, to decide which particular area of a website um, you move to a post login using a flow and a flows are really really useful to them the only other thing I want to very quickly show you to, how to do is to how to secure those areas and I'm just going to do it with one because it's the same process for all of them what we need to do now is to create ourselves a new um, API which I suggest you play I suggest you have some folders here for your API's as well um, covering each of the different areas I'm going to add an action in and I'm going to call it secure admin. And all we're going to do in there is add an action. We're going to add a security provider and we're going to add a security restrict. In this case, we want obviously the person to be an administrator. And if they are not, let's take them to the login page I'll just copy that over save that so basically we're going to security restrict now um, written which doesn't do anything other than check the security and what we can now do is go into our layouts pick our in this case it was the admin layout and if we click on the app section, you'll see here now server side data. We can select that security restriction there and apply that directly to the layout page, which means that whenever that layout page is loaded, then automatically that API action will run. And if the person who is loading in effectively the admin layout page in other words the sort of control header of everything to do with admin if they are not authorized with the role of admin then they, you will be just bounced over to the login page and you'll do that exactly that same process for the other four the other three areas create that security restrict and link it to the template page and that will ensure that your security is enforced at role level to each of those pages so i hope that's clarified things for everybody and uh, i hope to see you in the next video